All right. Uh, hi everyone. I'm Dr. Saurabh. So we will see this eyelids and conjunctiva quiz. Now the the thing is, I'm going live on this quiz uh, on the Telegram uh, bot. So I will give time also you to solve. I've given two minutes. So I will explain also. I'll give some time according to the question, and then simultaneously you can solve the question in your Telegram or you can solve uh, in your minds like we did uh, previously in the YouTube session. So that is your choice. I am going to solve simultaneously and give you explanation simultaneously. There are ten questions. I am ready to start this quiz. Oh, I have to click. I am ready. Okay. The first question is around distichiasis. I am holding when it comes to. Some around appropriate time. I will. This is the question. If you know, you know. You don't know, you don't know. So I'm giving time for you to solve this. No need to write anything. Just in your mind. Okay. Yeah, I'm visible and audible as well, both. So if you know, uh, I'll give you explanation of this because uh, 30 seconds is more than enough for this question. You should know distichiasis means extra layer of eyelash. There are anterior eyelid margin, posterior. From anterior eyelashes come that is hair follicles, uh, pilosebaceous gland, and from posterior meibomian gland openings are there. That is in the tarsus. So distichiasis is extra layer of eyelash. Anterior is coming naturally, and posterior also is coming. Why? Because the there is metaplasia of meibomian gland. Which has converted into hair follicle, sebaceous to pilosebaceous, that is metaplasia, that is distichiasis. Answer number B is answer. What do you do? You plug them out, the extra eyelashes, because that can irritate the cornea conjunctiva, leading to reflex watering, photophobia. Uh, but if it does not resolve by just epilation, it can recur again. You destroy the root of the hair follicle by extreme cold, cryotherapy minus 20 degrees Celsius, or by extreme heat, laser diatherapy. What is distichiasis? Misdirection of the Eyelashes which are coming from anterior, that is trichiasis, like in trachoma. What is tylosis? Thickening of eyelid margin. What is entropion? The entire eyelid margin is going inside. Entropion eyelid margin is going outside. So here the straight away answer answer is metaplasia of bobbing gland, that is distichiasis. Okay. Second is an image which I have shown. Just see the image, and you have to see. What is false for the image? I will read for you. Structure four and five are present only in the upper eyelid. Just see if you can tell. What is structure number one? Structure number two? Structure number three? Four and five. Option A is four and five are present only in the upper eyelid. Three sebaceous gland. Second option. Weakness of one will cause lid lag sign. Third option. And for this two is wider in the upper eyelid. This two is wider in the upper eyelid. Hmm. Okay, so let me explain. Structure one is orbicularis oculi. The weakness of orbicularis oculi, which closes the eyes naturally, the eye is not able to close. That is lag of thalamus in primary case, not lid lag sign. Lid lag sign is when the eyeball looks down, the eyelid is not following in down ways. That is lid lag sign. Can be seen in congenital simple ptosis. Can be seen in thyroid eye disease. So answer is C. Three is sebaceous meibomian gland. Two is tarsus. Tarsus is more in the Up more and wider in the upper eyelid. That's why meibomian glands are taller in the upper eyelid. Five and four are present only in the upper eyelid because five is the upper tarsal muscle, molar muscle, and four is the levator palpebral superioris. Both are present only in the upper eyelid. So answer is C over here. Weakness of one will cause lack of thalamus, not lid lag sign. True for molar muscle is now the third question.
Now just now I told you molar muscle, I showed you the molar muscle is the upper tarsal muscle, which is true is the question. So molar muscle is not supplied by third nerve, it is supplied by sympathetic nerves and hyperactivity, no, there is underactivity in Horner syndrome. That way there is partial ptosis in Horner syndrome. It consists of uh, skeletal muscle, no, it is a smooth muscle. And the C option is correct option, very good, because it is originating from LPS, inserting into upper tarsal, that's why it is also known as upper tarsal muscle. So it elevates the upper eyelid naturally 1 to 2 millimeters. So in Horner syndrome, there is a partial ptosis. And the surgery for Horner's ptosis was first introduced by uh, Fasanella Sarvat, that is Mullerectomy. It is a misnomer. It is a plication of the molar muscle, that is Fasanella Sarvat. First did for Horner's ptosis, now it can be done for mild congenital ptosis. So the answer is true is originates from levator palpebrae superioris. Fourth option, fourth, fourth uh, question. Actually, I gave the answer. What answer I gave? All of the features of congenital simple ptosis except R is asking molar muscle fir se dikhana. You do you, usme uh, telegram quiz me ja ke dekhlena ab. Ya dubara dekhlena YouTube pe. Dubara kaise jaunga? Okay. Yeah, D is the answer because I just gave you congenital simple ptosis. There is mal development of LPS muscle. And LPS muscle forms the eyelid crease, so there is an absence of eyelid crease as a pathogenic scene. There is a decreased LPS action. And Fasana Sarvat is done in mild congenital ptosis, not in severe cases. In severe, you do facial lata sling operation or frontalis. You join the frontalis to the tarsus so that you replace the function of LPS by frontalis sling operation. Fasana Sarvat is done for either congenital simple ptosis, mild one, or first introduced for Horner's ptosis. So, D is the answer over here. Yellow. This is molar muscle. Okay, next. Question number five is on Calaisian. I am showing you are wrong. The first question is all right. So, collision is a posterior eyelid swelling due to blockage of mebobian glands. More common in upper because mebobian glands are more common in upper because tarsus is thicker, wider in the upper eyelid. Now, infection it's a painless condition mostly in the upper eyelid, uh, can be in lower eyelid, uh, posterior eyelid swelling containing lipid. It is a lipogranulous inflammation of moving glands. That's why warm compresses are given with eyelid massages towards the eyelid margin. For small chalazion, intralesional uh, steroids are given. For large chalazion, you avert the eyelid, give a vertical incision and curate as the lipid material. But infection will lead to internal hodulum because the internal part of eyelid is involved, not external. External is seen in infection of anterior uh, sebaceous gland that is hair follicle and zeis. That is also known as tie. For internal and external hodulum, systemic antibiotic is the answer for treatment. So, answer is B. Yeah, good answers. Okay. So, again there is an issue that uh, the image is not given. So, I will quickly show the image for you. I hope it is there. All right, so this sometimes huh? the telegram. Uh, I showed this image. Okay, so see this image. This is the image which is uh, shown to you, and the question is following that image. Upl upload in the telegram, don't worry. So the question is which is the false statement? This is the image. 
अपर पेलपेब्रल कंजक्टिव शोन ट्रू और फॉल्स सीन इन वर्नल करेटो कंजक्टिव सीन इन ट्रकोमा सजेस्ट क्रॉनिक कंडीशन ओके ओके नो अरे यार नॉट दिस वन सॉरी सॉरी that's why sorry 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 the image which i was going to show you was yeah this one see this image upper papillary conjunctiva is shown it is a chronic condition seen in vernal carato or seen in trachoma which is false this is the image answer should be i can actually the image this is the image the answer is which is false This is Ald's line that is seen in trachoma, not vernal keratoconjunctivitis. conjunctivitis. There is a horizontal line due to conjunctival scarring. Chronic suggests chronic uh, histo classification. S means scarring. That is a chronic condition. And this is the upper palpebral is shown, not in vernal keratoconjunctivitis. conjunctivitis. Ah, so this is the question, which is the next one. The sign can be seen in all except. See the sign. And the question is this one. See the sign again. And answer the question. The sign can be seen in all except. Now this is a very big papillae, giant papillae. Papillae is suggestive of allergic conditions. So this is a giant papillae. Can be due to sutures. Can be due to contact lens. Can be due to vernal keratoconjunctivitis, but not filic tendor. That is the answer. Filic tendor means there is a nodule-like limbus. A uh, nodule at the limbus, type 4 hypersensitivity, endogenous allergy to staph and TB antigen. Topical steroid is given. That is looking like a nodule at the limbus. This is giant papillae, cobblestone appearance. Can be seen in vernal kerato, can be seen in contact lens, protruding uh, sutures. In vernal kerato, uh, there will be a young boy with recurrent itching, ropey discharge in summers. And giant can be more than 1 millimeter papillae. It can be due to allergy to foreign bodies like sutures, contact lens, where you have to remove the sutures. Or the remove the contact lens, but here the answer is Philip Tundler conjunctivitis. Next, I am sure you have to see Ping and Kula. Which nerve is implicated in Marcus Gunn jaw winking phenomena? I hope you know it is not so I'll wait. Many people might be making a mistake Marcus Gunn pupil and they will mark optic nerve. That is not the answer. Marcus Gunn jaw winking phenomena means when you move the jaw the eyelid winks. Winks is because of uh, movement is because of LPS. Jaw lateral pterygoid muscle is implicated. The fifth nerve abnormal mandibular nerve takes the impulse from lateral pterygoids to LPS. So whenever the patient uh, mostly young patient can be seen in males, females, but mostly in males. Moves his jaw, khana khate, chewing gum khate, to eyelid wink karti. That is Marcus Gunn winking phenomena. Trigeminal nerve is implicated, particularly mandibular nerve. That is a muscle nerve of mastication. And which muscle is implicated? The lateral pterygoids. What should be the treatment of this? Treatment karna thi hai, chhod de. Ab agar ap kare chhod de, to achhi baat hai. Khana khare ho aur aankh mar rahe ho. Nee matlab ho na? If you are eating and winking. So treatment should be, you can't take out the jaw, can't take out the fifth nerve, can't take out the LPS because it is very long. You disinsert the LPS from tarsus. That will, even if the fifth nerve is coming, it will not elevate. But if you disinsert the uh, LPS from tarsus, total ptosis will occur. So LPS disinsertion plus, who will tell me? The replacement of LPS function is by frontalis sling operation. So LPS disinsertion plus frontalis sling operation is a treatment of Marcus Gunn jaw winking phenomenon. Question 9, I will wait for you. Incorrect about pterygium. आर करे तो छोड़ दो अच्छी बात है आंख मार रहे हो खाना खाते खाते यार डॉक्टर तरुष नो योर आंसर इज रॉन्ग नो टेरिजियम इज अ टेरी मींस विंग लाइक प्रोलिफरेशन ऑफ द कंजंक्टिवा एंड टीनोन्स कैप्सूल ओवर द कॉर्निया 
mostly at the level of superficial cornea by mcq bowman's membrane it can be progressive coming with vessels or regressive it is as elastoid degeneration mostly seen in uh, those people who are exposed to ultraviolet rays exposure those who are working uh, in outdoors dhoop mein zyada kaam karte hain jaise laborers farmers uh, interns as well some interns not all uh, i hope you know let intern also work in uh, outdoors they have to bring uh, radio report patho report coffee also sometimes chai so simple excision will have recurrences because if you don't cover the sclera that is a bare sclera technique it will come back so you have to cover it by auto conjunctival graft or by amniotic membrane graft from obsganic department they are very good people and it contains of head head is towards the cornea neck is at the limbus body is towards the sclera and towards the head there is a iron deposition known as which line please mention which line iron deposition in the epithelium of the cornea interregium i give you four options face stalkers uh, flesher's ring or hudson line answer is stalkers line so simple excision with uh, auto conjunctival graft is the ideal treatment for pterygium so answer is c and the 10th question i will ask you now a patient young patient comes to you 22 year old comes to you with redness in the eyes with a serous discharge redness serous discharge in a 22 year old male he also has a history of urinary tract infection and on examination there were uh, follicles seen in the uh, palpebral conjunctiva on also examination the redness was blanched by topical phenylephrine i'll give you four options which is the correct statement over here again listen 22 year old male with redness with uh, serous discharge came up a urinary tract infection there were follicles in the upper palpebral conjunctiva and the redness was blanching by phenylephrine answer is a um ankylosing spondylite uh, i a is uh, answer a is adult inclusion conjunctivitis by chlamydia b is uh, ankylosing spondylitis c is ophthalmia neonatorum fourth is gonococcal conjunctivitis a option is adult inclusion conjunctivitis b option is uh, ankylosing spondylitis c is ophthalmia neonatorum d is gonococcal answer is now i know you must be confused in a and d of thermin neuterum you have to rule out because that is in within one month of birth is a 22 year old male okay uh, you rule out uh, ankylosing spondylitis because that is having uh, anterior hiatus that is deep vessels that is not blanched by conjunctive uh, blanched by phenylephrine so phenylephrine can blanch only two vessels one is uh, when epistritis and conjunctivitis so here why the answer is adult inclusion conjunctivitis because firstly there was a urinary tract infection but that can be seen in gonococcus as well but in gonococcus it is mostly not a serious discharge it is a uh, very mucopurulent this is a very severe sort of conjunctivitis patient has mucopurulent discharge lymph nodes involvement so here the better mostly the answer is adult inclusion conjunctivitis that is by chlamydia trachomatis that can also be seen after urinary tract infection that should be the correct answer of uh, this and yes there can be uh, initially serious later on severe can lead to uh, some mucus discharge but gonococcus presents with a very severe conjunctivitis either in newborn as well as in uh, newborn as well as in adults also gonococcus is the most severe conjunctivitis and follicles goes in favor of uh, uh, infection so that is mostly the a answer over here as a 10 questions i hope you have done well you can solve the questions on the, the link which is given in the youtube as well and i will post the link of the this session in the telegram as well thank you very much